Excellent. Okay, and from this point, all we do is you know make sure tracker is selected, go to Edit Target, and I'm going to use my Null 2 as the uh, um, uh, layer we're going to apply the track to, and hit OK, and go over down here, and the very last button says Apply, Apply, and I'm going to apply the X and the Y, hit OK, and it switches back to my regular view, and the tracking data has now been applied um, to my null object, which then I'm going to apply uh, to my background mask. Now, the problem is, if I apply my background mask, turn off, uh, turn off my actual background here. There we go. Turn off the tracker. Turn off the null object. If I apply, hit position and Alt. Hold on, Alt button. Click the position button. Go to null. At the position key, P for position, grab the pick whip, pick whip of the background mask, pick whip the position of the null object. Okay, yeah, that's all good, but now the problem is the whole layer is moving uh, with the, uh, the tracking data. I, I don't want that to happen. I want just the mask itself to move. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to create um, um, an actual layer mask um, or a uh, mask that's a layer on itself, apply the tracking data to that and use it as a luma mask. Um, so actually I'm going to pause here and I will be back in the part three and we'll, we'll just go from there so I don't have to stop in the middle of an explanation. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I really don't need to see my, my uh, uh, tracker so I'm going to toggle switch, uh, hit my shy button, which is this little guy with his nose sticking over over the wall, which is known as Kilroy for anyone who wants to know. You can look it up on Google. I can't remember why he was called Kilroy, but anyway, um, click that and it'll, it'll hide that layer. So we're going to deal with the, uh, the null object, which has all our tracking data, and uh, the background mask, which uh, actually, we're going to turn that into an actual mask. So let's go back to our mask data. I hit M twice for our masking options. And unclick invert. So instead of a hole being here, we're actually going to um, make that just the whole mask itself. So click invert. And now we have the mask there. And so we're going to use the background mask on this background layer. Oh, okay. This is this is going to be fun. I've got like five million things going through my mind right now trying to figure out which I'm going to do next. So, um, let's turn the background back on and I'm going to use an alpha mat for the background. Oh, maybe I'll use inverted alpha. There we go. So let me get my, my transparency. Okay, so now the background mask is uh, parented or pick whipped to the null object. So the position of the background mask is pick whipped to the excuse me uh, position of the null object. So now we have the uh, um, background mask, which is now an inverted alpha for the uh, um, ba regular background animation is now moving along with Sam rather than the whole actual um, layer, I mean animation layer of the background moving. Okay, so we got that done and now we can take the background and we can, well actually another little uh, uh, quickie here is I'm going to take it right up to the four second mark, click on the background because I want um, <clears throat> Uh, a portion of the background uh, with uh, with and without a mask. No, I'm not going to do that. Okay, never mind. So I'm just going to hit the background. Let's see here. Sorry, my brain is going like five million miles an hour. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm leaving it at four seconds, and I'll show you that shortcut. It's uh, to split these this uh, layer into two layers, um, right where our uh, animation um, uh, thingy here is. I can't remember what the hell that's called. Um, just Control Shift D, 
for duplicate and it wasn't supposed to do that. I have no idea what the heck that is. Okay, I have no idea why I did that. I think it might have been because uh, I was in my Camtasia. So, Control-Shift-D. Okay, I think it's because it's looking at uh, a, a shortcut for Camtasia. Okay, so Control-Shift-D out of it. Um, let's see if I can actually find it in here. Composition. It's on the background. might be Edit. Split layer. So, and normally it would be Control-Shift-D, but because I've got my Camtasia on, it's looking at it as a shortcut for Camtasia, not for After Effects. So, um, it would normally be Control-Shift-D, and it'll split that layer right at your uh, um, animation playback thingy here. So, the reason why I want to do that is I want to have, you know, Sam here, la 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 la, and bam, all of a sudden his head's masked out. Um, so I can have his head flying away um, and not be seen on the actual background animation layer. So I'm actually going to uh, name this background anim, short for animation, because we're going to make another background layer and we don't want to get these confused. So let's see here, what are we going to do here? Okay, and now the fun part is we actually have to animate this mask uh, for the background, um, for the background animation. Let's see here. So, don't think I need the null object anymore. So I'm going to shy that and keep the headshot. The headshot's actually turned off here. Okay. So actually, let's go into the mask on the headshot. Turn it back on. I see we got a, uh, a white outline around that and see if we can't fix it with uh, I think maybe a feather will fix it maybe nope it's it's pulling it's uh, hmm. yeah I'll, I'm not have, don't have to worry about because we'll fix it later on with a really simple fix so I'm not gonna worry about that okay so what I want to do now is I actually want to see what's going on in the background so I'm gonna take the uh, uh, background animation here, uh, background anim. I'm going to hit. Okay, there is no mask on it. Good. Okay, so I'm just going to lengthen that out. That's right. I forgot. There's uh, there's an actual alpha mask to it. So I'm just going to duplicate this, bring it to the very bottom. We're going to throw this out when we're done with it. Lengthen it, and then I'm going to turn down the transparency so I can see what's where his head is and it'll, it'll be easier just to just to make the mask um, with being able to see the actual layer okay so at this point I'm actually going to um, animate the mask <clears throat> and honestly I can't remember I said I was going to show you how to do it but I can't remember if I actually did show you uh, so what I'm going to do is let's double hit the background mask, double click the M. Um, the mask path is already selected and I'm going to arrange my mask points to where I want them. Now I'm actually more concerned about around his jacket because we're actually going to have to uh, fill in that uh, part uh, with some, you know, some kind of geometry or you know colors and stuff to make it look like, <coughs> excuse me, uh, there's an opening in his jacket where the stump of his neck should be. So this doesn't really have to be too clean. Um, you can be really anal retentive about it, but don't really have to at this point. So actually, let me put handles on this one. Let's make it a little bit smoother. Okay, and what what I would do is just go, you know, a few frames down, and you don't even have to click the stopwatch again. Any of the uh, um, move the mask wherever. Um, it'll automatically set a keyframe for you. And so just make sure 
his head is inside the mask. Okay, so it looks good. And go a few more keyframes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I will, uh, yeah, pause it, and I'll be back in a few minutes.